praise God for today. <clears throat> Solution hour is really the hour that God solves our problems. Solution hour is highly important to every one of us. So I'm so delighted every time to welcome you to Solution Hour. I pray that God Almighty will bless you. The Lord will touch you as we pray together today and as we look at the pages of the scriptures together. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, the Father who loved us so much that he gave us Jesus Christ to come to our place and die for us. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration for the great and mighty things that you are doing. We thank you because every week you bring us to this hour of solution, whereby we can call on you, whereby we can pray unto you, whereby we can seek your face. Father, you say we are two or three people are gathered together in your name. You are there in their midst to grant their requests. Father, we bring our request before you today. We are asking that you grant our request. Give us the faith of a believer that every one of us as a believer will be able to take the right action and do the right thing for your name's sake. Father, we pray that you come and honor yourself and glorify yourself. Make our meeting today to be super. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, by the grace of God, we are looking at believers' action. Believers' action. Turn your Bible with me to Luke chapter 7, verses 2 and 3. Luke 7, 2 and 3. And a certain centurion servant who was there to him was sick and ready to die. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. Here in this passage of the scriptures, we are told about an army officer who had an information about Jesus. And the information he had about Jesus was very useful to him. He used the information he had about Jesus for the challenge that was facing him. What was the challenge? His servant, whom he loved, who was dear to him, is sick. In this passage, you see that many a times majority of the problems we are facing is a problem of people that are close to us. They have challenges. Maybe a child that is sick affects the mother. A child that is given to drug affects the parents. A child is sent to school, but this child is not doing well. It affects everybody. There is problem that is facing an individual, your uncle, your sister, your brother, your your auntie. And this problem is seriously plaguing them. 
and they brought this problem on you, affecting you as well. So the problem and the challenge of other people, the welfare of other people, plagued this man. And he was concerned. Because we are made to understand as human beings, we are social beings. And because we are social beings, relationship is very essential to us. In fact, one psychologist said, relationship is a mental vitamin. You relate with other human beings, it gives a kind of welfare to your brain. And when your brain has a good welfare, it affects every other part of your body. There are other people that don't know how to handle relationship, maybe because of the problem that relationship is causing on them. Husband and wife relationship. Parents and children relationship. Lovers relationship. Boss and officers at work relationship. All this relationship is causing a lot of labor and energy on many people. And because of this situation, they don't know how to handle it. Many of them in through this one because they don't know how to handle the relationship because of the concern of the relationship, they end up ruining the whole entire relationship. And what is important in life is not your qualification or your position, but your person to people that are around you. And it's all based on relationship. So with the story of this soldier, one of his servants that he loved so well, dear to him, was sick and was ready to die. The thought of this individual wanting to die was a very great pressure and energy sucker from this man. And he cried out to Jesus. The feelings of this man led him to faith. He was reaching out to help this other one. In the course of his reaching out, it led him to redemption. Not only that, we are made to understand that anybody that forgets himself to be able to attend to other people can never be forgotten. The memory lasts. The memory lives forever. So benevolence is never without a benefit. So let's understand that the soldier submitted to Christ, his slave submitted to Christ, and then the submission brought blessings upon them. So let's realize that we have information about Jesus and we acted about this information. In the passage we are looking at, three things come out very clearly. This army officer had an option option to approach Jesus and option not to approach him. This officer received an order. The order to obey Jesus and the order not to obey him. Number three, there is a kind of oddity, a kind of surprise in what transpired between this officer and Jesus Christ. Look at it in verse 3 of Luke chapter 7. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent the elders of the Jews to him. You see, in this place, this man heard about Jesus. And he took a step about Jesus. He sent the elders to him. He prayed. He appealed to him. And he told Jesus, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. This man sent messengers to Jesus Christ. 
that they recall he was following the process of how to receive from the Lord to receive the miracle to receive a blessing and he was pleading he was praying in the course of his prayer he sent people to Jesus Christ this man regarded himself as unworthy you know it's one thing for you to pray it's another thing for you to be able to humble yourself before the presence of the Lord to receive from God this man said I'm not worthy look at what he said in verse 6 then Jesus went with them because this man sent to Jesus Jesus now decided to respond to the man in the response of Jesus this man now told Jesus when Jesus was very close and not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, do not trouble yourself. For I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. That is humility. Look at this servant. He was an army officer. He counted himself, I'm not worthy. And the people looked at him and said, this man is so devoted to God. He built us a temple. He did everything that he needed to be done. This man is a great man. So, Jesus, you need to go to his house. The man said, no, 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 no. It's not my good works that I'm bringing to this place. I'm not like Cain, who presented the works of his hand. There's no work of our hand that can save us. Our tithe, our offering, our attendance in church, uh, charity, or whatever we are doing for anybody cannot save anyone. Our good work cannot save us. It's not that we shouldn't do good. We should do good. But the basis of our salvation is on Jesus, not on our good works. Our faith is in what Jesus has done, not in what we have done. The man said, no, it's not my good works. No, not at all. I depend absolutely on the work of God. I depend absolutely on what he has done. This man was not parading a false humility. He was having a correct thinking of who Jesus is. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, none of us is even worthy to have the visitation of Jesus. It's not our good works. You know, Jesus does not deal with us as we deserve. That is talking about his grace. Our relationship with Jesus Christ is not based on our merit. It's not my good works. It's not because I go to church. It's not because I'm a pastor. It's not because I'm good. It's not because I give arms. It's not because I do anything. No. It's based on his mercy. You receive mercy. Mercy of God. What you don't deserve, God decided to just give it unto you. That is mercy. What you are not worth to have, God decides to give it unto you. That is mercy. So we depend absolutely on the mercy of God. And uh, all that God is looking for, the fitness he requires, is to fill our need of him. That's all. So this man chose the right option. And he went to Jesus. And told Jesus, Jesus, I'm not qualified. Don't come to my house. But your mercy is what I depend upon. And he got it. Look at the order. In verse 8, he said, Jesus, remember that I'm a soldier that is trained. He said, for I am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. I say unto one, go. And he goes, and to another, come. And he comes, and to my servant, do this. And he does it. This man told Jesus Christ, I understand the power of the word. You just speak. 
He must have realized that Jesus Christ is the one that created the whole world. And Jesus spoke. As he spoke, the whole world was created. He said, oh God, now look at it, Jesus. You spoke and you created the world. All that we are seeing in the world, you spoke and everything came up. He said, all that you need to do, speak. Look at how the psalmist put the power of the world. In Psalm 33, I want to read verse 6. It says, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. And all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. By the word of the Lord, everything you see is made. And all the hosts of heaven by the breath of his mouth. Look at the sun, look at the star, look at the galaxies, look at the sea. God spoke and it came up. God has spoke. And all these things were created. If that God speaks to your situation and speaks to anything concerning your life, life will come. Because the world was void, terrible, bad. God spoke, life came. And I'm believing God. And the word of God is what you are listening to. The word of God is what you are hearing. Only what we need to know Whatever we have seen in the scriptures, whatever God has said, he speaks it out, life will come. That's what we are waiting for. The centurion believed that the sickness that the servant was suffering was under the authority of Jesus. He said, Jesus, just speak. This sickness will depart. At the command of Jesus, those who are under the authority of Jesus Christ, they are packaged everything in their life. They are packaged all their thought. They are packaged all their mind. They are packaged all their belief. They are packaged everything. All the situations facing them in life. They are packaged them and put it under the authority of Jesus. There's something surprising here. There's something strange, which is the oddity of this story. What is it? Whenever a believer acts according to the leading of the Spirit of God in his mind, it normally surprises God. When you surprise God, he in return surprises you. Do you remember the story of Abraham? He surprised God. God told him, Abraham, take your son, your holy son, whom you love so much, carry him to a mountain. And he took him there. And right there and there, God told Abraham, Now I know that you fear God and that you love God with all your heart. God knew. But he was showing Abraham, he wanted Abraham to know the position of his own heart because God in his sovereignty knows that Abraham loved him. Let's think about the case of Daniel. When they were binding Daniel and they were sending him to the den of lion, God knew. But God was only testing. Look at the case of Chedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God knew. They said, oh king, we respect you, we love you. We care about what you are saying. But our God, who we serve, he will save us from this problem. But if he even though if he does not even save us, be it known unto you that we are ready to go and die. But we are not going to bow down to another God. May God help you, my brother. May God help you, my sister, that we will never bow down to another God. In the mighty name of Jesus. No matter the pressure, no matter the trouble, you will never bow down. Look at Joseph. He never bowed down to another God. Because... How these people surprise God and God surprise them. The situation you are facing is not to damp you, to put you down, to destroy you, to ruin you. No, not at all. God is giving you a chance to surprise him. And as we have faith in him and we trust in him, you are going to surprise him and you are going to overcome. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Because that is the will of God for us. Now the Bible tells us in verse 9 that when Jesus heard these things, he marveled. Wow. And turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found such a great, no, not even in Israel. Jesus marveled. Oh, wow. How can people have this kind of faith? Now, let's flip the coin. Two things normally make God to be surprised. Number one, when you exercise faith in him and trust in him, you surprise him. He will surprise you. Another thing that surprises God is this. When God is moving in faith, I mean, when God is moving in other people's life, and he expects you to look at the life of this individual and say, God, if you do it for so and so, you can do it for me. If you do it for so and so, you can do it for me. And you are not exercising faith. Enough. It surprises God too. Look at Mark chapter 6, verse 6. The Bible says, and he, talking about Jesus, marveled because of their own belief. And he went about the village in a circuit teaching. So, you see in this passage of the Bible that God himself marveled at them because they were not exercising faith enough. Again, the Bible made us to understand this centurion did not even depend on sight. He was not even looking at another person. He was not even depending on his own sense because the servant was dying, sick. But this man had faith in God. And the Bible made us to understand very well that without faith, it is impossible to please God. He went further to make us to understand for he who comes to God must believe that this God, that this God is the rewarder of all them that diligently seek him. That's Hebrew 11, 6. So we need the word that. So this is the path that God himself has chosen. The way to please God is the pathway of faith. Believers will act according to to the word of God, the information you have heard, you act on the information. You believe the word of God is true. It's the same word of God that you are reading that created the world, that healed the sick, that raised the dead, that opened the blind eyes, that makes the deaf to hear, that makes the lame to walk. Is the same word of God. And that word of God is personified in our Lord Jesus Christ. All you need to do is just believe in that word. And three things will happen in your life. Number one. God Almighty will intervene. In your inevitables. So we are going to pray three prayers today. One. God Almighty, come and intervene in my inevitable. Number two, God spoke the word and sicknesses departed. He's going to speak the word and sickness is going to depart from your life. God closed the door of death because we are told that that servant was dying. When God closed that door, he restore the dear servant back to his devoted master. So those three things God is going to do for us today. Number one, God is going to intervene in our inevitables. Number two, God is going to speak and our sicknesses will depart. Number three, God is going to close the door of death. No matter what you are diagnosed with, God can close that door. He will close the door of death and give you life. Let's pray. I want you to commit yourself into the hand of the Lord, asking the Lord, O oh God of heaven, you are the mighty God. Come and intervene. In cases that I am weak and I can't help myself, Oh God of heaven, come and intervene. 
It can intervene in your inner pity booths. It can solve every bit of your problem. Lord, come and intervene in my inevitables. I don't have the power. I don't have the strength. Only you can do it. Come and do what you alone can do. Be me. Be me. Be me, Lord. Deliver me every sickness in my body. Speak. And the sickness will depart. Oh Lord, I depend upon you and I trust in you. Let your mighty power descend. Let your glorious power descend. Speak to my heart. Speak to my life. And remove this sickness from me. In the name of Jesus. Every door of death. Every door of limitation. Every ceiling of the devil. Upon your life. Oh God. Close it. Every door the enemy has opened. Lord, close it. Every door of failure, every door of disappointment, every door of losses, every door of diseases, of sicknesses, of sin. Father, close it. Every door of death. Come and close it. Every door of shame. Father, close it. Deliver me. Solution hour. It doesn't matter where you are watching it. It doesn't matter where you are seeing it. God will deliver. Distance is no barrier to Almighty God. If you know there is anything wrong in your life, you know you are living in the life of sin. God is asking you to turn away. Turn away from sin. The information you have heard about Jesus, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. That is information. Come. A sinner will run away from God, but you come. Even though your sin is as red He will make it clean. He will make you pure, whiter than snow. He will make you. It can be like scarlet, but he will make you clean. The Lord's will is that you are free. Today is your day of freedom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, Thank you for the hour of solution this week. We praise you and we worship you because every week you keep meeting us at the point of our need. We thank you because your word can never fail. Your promises are yea and in you they are amen. We thank you for the great and mighty things that you are doing. We thank you because whenever we hear any information about you, about your word, about your will, and we believe you manifest yourself. Father, like you turn the story of these people from worse to good, like you make them better, like you lifted them out of the pit of hell, 
like you delivered them from the depth of grave and you gave them a new life. Oh Lord, we are praying that today let your divine power, let your miracle power, let your unchanging power, the power of old, deliver us completely and totally in this hour of solution in the name of Jesus. This individual listening and you are almost passing away and you are thinking, what am I going to do? By the power of resurrection that brought Jesus back from the grave, may that power touch your life now and set you free in the name of Jesus. Every death is cancelled. Every disease is removed. Every sickness is taken away. Let the lame rise up and walk. Let the blind eyes be opened. Let the deaf ear be opened. No matter the sickness you are having in your body, cancer, diabetes, whatever may be the name, let everything be removed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus was the same yesterday, today and forever. Do what only you can do. All power belongs to you. Let your people give testimony on this platform. We thank you because we know you have answered us today. We are trusting you, God, that the next week when we come again, you will answer our prayers. To you be the glory and the honor and the adoration for the great and the mighty things that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you. We will appreciate you to just send us an email. Tell us what God is doing in your life. And you can call us. And let us know as shown on the screen. Know how you are doing. And by the grace of God, your testimony is sure. God bless you. Till next week. Bye.